um, today's startup story. My name is Erica and I serve as the Director of Operations here at Conductor. So before we get started, I'd love to tell you a little bit about Conductor. Um, we exist to empower entrepreneurs, small business owners, small business leaders in Arkansas. And the way we do that is through events like today, um, have local entrepreneurs share their startup stories with you all, technical workshops, one-on-one -on -one consulting with our team, <laughs> and, a, <laughs> <laughs> and a network of subject matter experts, um, also through the Arnold Innovation Center, which is this space that you guys are in. It's a low cost um, membership to small business owners uh, provided to us by Palm Report. So I will delay no longer. Um, please help me welcome the call of today's startup story. We're so excited to have you be here for me today. Um, and also, there's plenty of food, so please get more. It's preferably not in the middle of the presentation, but feel free to get more. Uh, welcome to all. I'm going to call Ivan and we'll talk to your team. And if you don't know where we're at, we're a couple streets over on Van Rumpel in between the Sporty Browner and Citrus Garden. We've been there for about four years. Um, but yes, just want to thank all of y'all for coming. It's so kind that you take the time out of your day to come listen to me talk. Um, just going to kind of share a little bit about how I got started, how our little coffee came to be. Um, I don't feel like it's anything super crazy. Um, I did come into it right out of college, which is maybe a little different than some business owners, um, but don't have like a long path of other jobs and careers that led me here. Kind of always knew I was going to do something like this. Um, so I'm going to start at the very beginning. And so I think it is a I think just to show that I kind of always knew I'd end up here. I've always loved clothes and fashion. I've always been like a girly girl. Um, so this was me like every day when I was little coming in in some crazy little get up. Um, there's so many home videos. I come in in like the dress and the hat and the shoes and the high heels that were too big. Um, and so I've always just had a love for that. Um, kind of always thought that it would be cool to own a clothing store. Um, when I was little, I really wanted to be a fashion designer. Um, got a little older, realized that I couldn't draw and that play kind of a big role in that. Um, so my sick people weren't going to cut it. Um, but so kind of thought, oh, it would be really cool to start a clothing store, have that dream, but thought, well, that's something I'll do later on. It makes more sense when I'm older, when I have a family, maybe when I have more money. Um, so kind of didn't take that, um, too seriously at the time. Um, so I was raised in Conway. My family moved here when I was two. Uh, so I've been here my whole life, went to Conway High, uh, graduated from here in 2015 and ended up going to Washita Baptist. I looked at a couple of different schools. I wanted to pursue fashion merchandising, so was looking at schools with some degrees in that, um, but nothing really worked out. They were all a little too far. I had family that went to Washita, so really wanted to end up there. So in deciding to go there, I just ended up deciding to go the business route instead. So I studied business with an emphasis in marketing, management, and entrepreneurship. Um, and kind of just going in thinking I was really going to end up just doing something in marketing. Um, so kind of generic, and then the more I was in college and thought about it, did some research in specific fashion jobs. Um, my idea was that I was going to go to Dallas and work in a showroom at the Dallas Market Center there. And if you don't know, um, any store that wants to buy can go to the markets. There's multiple ones, but I specifically wanted to go to Dallas work for a brand, sell for the brand, basically. Um, so when I was in college, um, they will let you come work for the week for at market just because they need the extra help. So for some connections, I got to go do that um, and did it and realized that it was not what I thought it was going to be. It was not what I wanted. I don't think I even really knew what the job was in my head. I was just like, oh, this is fashion and it's in Dallas. That's going to be great. I thought I was going to be this big city girl and have this fashion job and that was it, that was all I needed to do. Um, and so then when I went and actually experienced it, realized um, I definitely wanted to be more on the buying side instead of the selling side. Um, and that I was definitely more of a small town, slower paced kind of girl. Um, I wanted to stay here. Um, so when that kind of, that plan got all flipped upside down, I was like, okay, well, let me seriously consider now starting a business at this point um, directly out of college. So took that idea to my parents. They kind of always knew that was something that I wanted, but talked to them 
um, seriously about it. They're here and they're very supportive. Um, so really started going hit the ground and running on that after that. So um, I knew that my first step was going to be getting a business loan. I did not have the funds to start it myself. So that was kind of my first plan of action. But before that even happened, we ended up finding the location, which was a little out of order. Um, but I was in college at the time, and my mom called me and she said, we found this place downtown that's for rent. Um, it needs a lot of work, but I think that it would be great. You need to come look at it. And so I came home from college. We went and we looked at it, um, and it did need a lot of work. But I was like, no, I think that this would be great. And so um, at the time, honestly, did not had not started the process for a loan, did not have any money. So went to an owner and said, hey, this is my plan. I'm wanting to start this business. I'm planning on trying to get a small business loan. I would love the space. I have no money for it right now. But you <laughs> will hold it until I get money. And I don't know why he said yes other than the Lord. Um, and I was going to be to get a loan. So he was just really trusting me. Um, but he did. He said, yes, I'll hold it until you get that loan. And so that was in February. So as soon as that happened, I was like, okay, I really need to take all the steps to make sure um, I get this loan as soon as possible because he was holding that. Um, and we knew that it was going to need a lot of renovations. And so that was what the majority of the money was going to go to and then buying start of inventory. Um, so as soon as we got that, I worked in on getting the business plan started, worked with my dad, who's very business savvy. Uh, so we went to the Arkansas Small Business Technology Development Center. It's a mouthful. Um, but they are a great resource for small businesses wanting to get started. Went through my business plan in depth with them. They gave me some great feedback, connected me with some great contacts at banks. So ended up taking my business plan to three different banks, kind of just going through it with them, um, you know, just telling them my goals and projections, things like that. Um, ended up getting um, an SBA loan from Arvest, and then that was in May, as soon as we got that. Um, really just worked on getting the renovations going, ordering inventory, furniture, all of the things to make the storefront come together. So I've included lots of photos just to kind of show um, how crazy it was. So it was all kind of blacked out. The top ones are before. There was a stage. Apparently it used to be used for concerts. Um, but maybe one of you guys have been to a concert there. I don't know. Um, but so it had you know, <laughs> white and bright and airy and even like I remember the contractor he was like you want everything white and I was like yes all white and he was like I don't know how that's gonna look and I was like no it's gonna look good I promise <laughs> <laughs> uh, so kind of just um this was in the middle of it all and then this was right after everything got done and then this is um the sales floor today in our dressing room both are um a little different even from when we originally opened Unfortunately, I like to redecorate things all the time. So um, we already made some changes or we just redid our dressing rooms, but that is what it looks like today. We added walls, we took down walls. It was kind of a whole, a whole thing, but my mom really saw the potential. Uh, and then these are just some fun little photos. This one was like two days before we opened. I had like all the clothes laid out. I was inputting it onto the system, tagging it all. It was so crazy. Um, but that time was so fun to me because like all of my friends came and helped. My family was there, my family's friends, like some of my current small group came, like just so sweet to see people like rally around in that way and help. And they were screwing in racks and tagging clothes and steaming clothes. Um, and so it's just so fun to look back on that time and think about all the people who helped it come together. And then the middle photo was the day that we opened, and then that was me on the day that we opened in November. Um, so a little bit of what I do day to day, um, buying and inputting inventory. So I spend a big chunk of the day, honestly, just online shopping is what it is. Um, just looking at clothes, ordering, um, so much of it so that even like after a while, I'm like, okay, this is all blurring together. It doesn't, nothing looks good to me. I don't want to order anything right now and kind of have to like take a few days break and come back to it. Um, and then inputting all the inventory that we get into the system, pricing it, tagging it, getting it ready to go out. Um, it is like Christmas every day that we get boxes. It's so fun opening them up, seeing what we got. 
It was so fun actually because before we opened, all of the boxes were being sent to my parents' house. And so like 20 boxes would show up on their little front porch and my mom would like open them all up together. Um, or they would come when I was gone and she would send me a picture and be like, can I open this and see what it is? <laughs> and so we still have like, that was so fun whenever that happened, but that is such a fun part of the job. Uh, taking photos of new inventory, um, getting things ready for content creation, um, Instagram, Facebook, our website, things like that. That obviously, you know, digital marketing, digital marketing is the number one source for us, um, where everyone can see our new arrivals, things like that. So just staying up to date on that. Um, trend analysis, so really just researching, keeping up with what people are wearing, what people here are going to buy, um, just looking online, looking ahead, because we tend, because we're smaller, we tend to follow trends about like six months later. Um, so seeing like, oh, if this trend is really big in a big city right now, we're probably going to start liking that in about six months and just being aware of things like that. So knowing um, what to buy in the future. And then, like I said, working on our website, uploading all new arrivals, doing product descriptions, changing um, cover photos, things like that. Um, and then going to market, I don't do that every day, but I get to do that about two to three times a year. Um, and that is so great for me when I go through that like phase of not liking anything online. It's so nice to get to go and see it all in person. Um, kind of like how a lot of us like prefer um, going shopping in store instead of online because you can just see it, you can feel it. Um, a lot of times, like I can order something that looks great and then I get it in and the quality, I'm like, oh, this is not what I thought that it was going to be. So it's nice to just get to see that in person, see, make sure that it's a good product, see how it fits. Um, and things just jump out, uh, jump out at you more in person. Um, and so I like that. I feel like when I go to market, I find so many things I like as opposed to sometimes online. I'm like, oh, I only like a few things. Okay, some of the lessons that I've learned. Um, so the first major thing that happened was COVID. Um, we opened in November of 2019. And honestly, before we opened, I was not really nervous at all until like the <coughs> night before. And then I was like, what if nobody shows up for opening day? Um, but thankfully that did not happen. Family was great. We had a great turnout. It was right around the holidays, Black Friday, Christmas. Um, Christmas open house, we had so many big things to look forward to. So it was so busy, um, you know, we were still getting our name out there, people were coming um, to visit, and so that was such a good time um, that really really over, and then March came, and COVID happened, and it turned everything upside down. Um, so that was obviously hard for all businesses, but I feel like, you know, we hadn't even been established yet, we have been open like four months, um, so it's hard to, like, get people to support and come back, and they've only been in our store, like, once or twice, maybe three times. Um, so just trying to um, keep that up, but at the same time, we did not have a website. We were only in store at that time. And so seeing uh, when that happened, when we were closing other stores, being able to um, still promote themselves online and say like, oh, we're closed, but you can still shop with us. Um, and trying to do the best we could on like Facebook and Instagram, but just having the convenience of having the website, having people, you know, not having to DM you or call you to order. A lot of times people just don't want to talk to you. Um, so realizing how important that was. So working on that in the next few months um, to get that going. And I don't know how quickly I would have done that if COVID hadn't happened. Um, so really just taught me how significant having that was. Um, and then changing trends. Obviously, I mean, this is something I kind of knew about, just loving fashion, realizing things come in and out really fast. Um, but just when I actually have to do the research on it and being aware of, um, you know, things can be backordered for months. And so thinking, okay, I like this, this is popular, but by the time I actually get it in and it actually gets here, is this even going to be popular anymore? Um, thinking about things like that, just being aware of those and um, aware of what people are wearing. Um, and then value over price. So when I first started, my one of my goals was to be really affordable. Um, I grew up shopping at TJ Maxx. I've been a bargain shopper. And um, in a sense, I wanted to bring that to my store um, and be able to offer that to people. And so when I opened, I did. And, um, you know, things were, I barely marked things up to like standard market. Um, and realized that that was not sustainable at all. Um, and kind of just thought about it, I am bringing um, a good and valuable product. I am bringing something that you can't order on Amazon. Um, and so people, um, most of the time, are going to be willing to pay for that. 
Um, and I do feel like I bring in um, a niche market sometimes. I like to try to target a lot of people. But I also do like to offer, um, I don't know, I do feel like I have a different sense of style sometimes. And so offering that that maybe you can't get anywhere else. And so feeling like, okay, if I'm bringing that in, then people will be willing to pay for that. And there is a line between still being affordable, but also uh, making sure your business is profitable as well. Um, ebb and flow. So retail is crazy. It's up and down. Um, you know, the fall, Christmas, Black Friday is so great. Everyone's um, Christmas shopping. And then obviously January, no one wants to spend money, kind of slows down and then picks back up in the spring. Summer, maybe people are on vacation or spending money on other things. Um, then school's back, college students are back, um, people are buying for football games, so things like that, um, you know, really make this go up and down and just being aware of that, learning that, um, you know, there's high highs and there's low lows and, you know, realizing in those first few months, like, not having experienced how, you know, slow it can be, like, oh my gosh, are we going to be able to stay in the business this month, but realizing that that's just kind of how it goes and so learning to adapt to that learning, you know, what's to come, learning in December, like, this is great, but preparing, we know January is going to be slower, how can we set ourselves up for that, and so um, really just learning that it comes in ways and how to um, best prepare for that. And then knowing your market, um, just knowing your customers, knowing who we're selling to, um, knowing that we are in a smaller town, we're maybe not as high fashion as some other places, so as much as I see something that's really cool, and I'm like, oh, I want to bring that I don't know that the people here would always want to buy that. Um, knowing that we have families and moms and a lot of college students. Um, so, you know, trying to work on targeting everybody. Um, when it comes to price, knowing like, you know, like I said, being affordable, but also knowing that there is a line um, because we are a smaller market that there, you know, people do have um, a limit that they're willing to spend and just being aware of that. And so knowing that everything that I buy will most likely sell. Um, okay, now I have some other just little fun pictures. This was me in November when we celebrated four years. Um, and then this was past fall. We won Best Women's Clothing in Faulkner County, um, which was so fun. I had been wanting really bad to win that since we opened. And so that was a really fun moment and just so sweet that our customers voted for us, um, which is really special. Um, and then this is my family on the far right. Most of them are here, but I own it, but it is a family affair. I don't know what I want it to be. <laughs> but um, they have steamed and cleaned and screwed in and built all the things um, and mopped. And they're with me Thanksgiving night getting ready for Black Friday the next day. So um, I definitely could not do it without them. And um, okay, the perks. These are, to me, in my opinion, the best things about owning a business, um, specifically in Conway, creating relationships. I love getting to create relationships with the customers that come in. Um, when they tell you what they're shopping for, when you get to know them, we you know have repeat customers and we know their birthdays, we send them birthday cards. And I think that only not that sets us apart, but that also is just so sweet to get to know them in that way. Um, and I just love like when they come in and they're shopping for their engagement or their graduation or their birthday and it's something so small but it's special to them and so that they trust us to help them find something that's going to uh, make them feel good um, is really special to me um, and then being a part of the downtown community downtown Hawaii is amazing um, not only are there amazing customers that um, come in and support but just getting to know all the other business owners um, even with us at the Sporty Runners which is Garden and America Jane across the street uh, we're obviously all very different, but just getting to know them and having the bond of like all owning businesses close together has just been um, great to know them. Some of the other businesses, business owners that I've gotten to know, um, it's just so fun to get to talk with them and get to know them. And it's just, Conway offers so many things, so many events um, to get the community out and in your business. And so it's really just a great place to be a part of. Um, and then giving back, this is something that is so important to me. Um, I love getting to donate gift cards to organizations when we can. Um, we've donated clothes to Haven House. Um, we've done school supply drive for Haven House. Um, we always participate in the Christmas extravaganza, which donates a portion of sales to Arkansas Alzheimer's. Um, so that is just really important to me. I love to do that when I can. I feel like I'm so blessed that the work has allowed me to be able to do this. So when I'm able to give back, I love to do that. 
Um, and then hosting events is so fun. Uh, we do little pop-ups, sometimes on Saturday, sometimes after hours. Um, not only are we like other businesses are coming in to set up so we get to support them, but it's just so fun to have so many people in the store at one time. It's definitely usually a different atmosphere than just day to day getting to host those little events. And so I just love um, to see everybody in there. Everyone's just having a fun time. So I love doing that. Okay, and the last thing, I do have a little advertising, having the Valentine's <coughs> party next Thursday from 6.30 to 8. We're going to have classes, cookies, and some other fun little pop-ups. So if you are into that kind of thing, we would love for you to come. We're going to have some sales. Um, but that's really all I have. Um, I did not know what I was doing when I got into this. I was six months out of college. Um, I'm still learning new things every day. I still would not say I really know what I'm doing. Um, but it's so fun, and Conway really is the best place to do this. So you talked about how you know, COVID made you really have to go online in that regard. How much were actually if I can ask specific percentage of everything, but would you say that the online part is a really big part of your business now? Um, I would still say we do more in store. Um, I would say it's a good amount, but um, definitely that is something I wanted to work on this year is growing that as well. But I do feel like it's been very helpful in kind of supplementing that gap between um, the people online and the people in store as well. So how detailed was your dream when you went to get your small business loan? Um, it was very detailed. Yes. Um, kind of, you know, I had even in it, I had said, like, I feel like I bring a different sense of style maybe at the time than other places. I kind of told them that goal of being more affordable, which I do still feel like we preach, um, even if it's maybe not as much as it was when we originally opened. Um, and so yeah, lots of numbers, lots of things I planned on carrying, lots of brands. Um, yeah, give them lots of details. <laughs> Anyone else? Um, so how often do you do price changes, like raising your price of something? How often do you do that? Quarterly? Um, I would say, I don't know, it's really just depending on, I think, the, you know, what the market is looking like. We have, I wouldn't say we've done that, like a big increase other than the original one, that's when I realized, like, we're not going to stay in business. Um, but just realizing, you know, everything now is typically um, like a standard markup, which I wasn't even doing in the beginning. Um, but I wouldn't say we like, um, you know, at a certain time have a certain increase or say, okay, now we're going to evaluate. Just kind of um, paying attention to what's going on. And obviously now like clothes, buying myself, buying them for the store is way more expensive than it was, you know, even four years ago. Um, so just kind of paying attention to things like that. But not that we have a set time that we do that. Um, you know my name, well, uh, <laughs> uh, is it where you expect to be today, well, when, when you picture four years from now? Yeah, I feel, I honestly feel like I didn't even know what to expect. Right. Like, I feel like I never even thought that far ahead. I mean, obviously I wanted it, like, to get class, but, um, yeah, I think that it's, like I said, the comedy community is great, and I think that they um, supported us in ways that I didn't imagine, and especially once COVID happened, thinking like, okay, we've barely been here, are we going to be able to make this out, like make this last? And so, just going through that and then seeing where we are now, I think it's been good. What advice would you give to small business owners that are their marketing coordinator, inventory accountant, you know, like doing everything? What advice would you give to those business owners? Um, it's, it's a lot of jobs, and I do. I think that it's just kind of focusing on one task at a time. Um, I have not really been good at that in the past. Um, and so just sitting down and saying, okay, I'm going to focus on this, um, but also learning how to delegate. I have employees, but for the longest time, I didn't even delegate things to them because I was like, no, I want to do this. Um, but realizing like they're there to help me. And so learning how to do that as well. Any other questions? You mentioned that you like whenever you started your business, you were pricing your items below the standard in the market. Would you recommend for entrepreneurs starting out to price below the standard, or would you say that you maybe wish that you would have? Um, 
Um, yes, definitely wish I would have hit the standard more um, because I mean, you just won't stay in business if you don't. And um, I think I was like, oh, this will be great. This will, um, you know, everyone will want to buy more. But there also just comes a time where no matter what the price is, people just might not. And so it doesn't really matter either way. All right, one more round of applause for McCall. Short story or workshops, um, stuff that we have coming up. February 28th, we will have a panel on funds and foundations for small wow. business owners at CTA for the business from 12 to 1. February 29th, we'll be here uh, with. Lynn Crockett for a stellar sales workshop. And then March 5th, we'll be here again for startup stories with Enterprise Digital. So um, if you guys want to keep up with events, see what we have going on, we would love it. I would really love it. I'd do our marketing here. Um, if you would follow us on social media or on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So that's the quickest way to see what we have going on. And we appreciate y'all coming today and taking the whole thing. Thanks for having me.